Well, hello. Today, I wanted to talk to lenses, FPV lenses, little things like these that go on the end of your camera. Uh, and there's two reasons I want to talk about this. And the first uh, is going to sound a bit basic because I want to talk about the focusing and swapping of lenses. Uh, and the reason I want to do this is I keep meeting people who are uh, new pilots and they're flying with cameras that I found to be out of focus. Now, one of the problems about being new is some of them just assumed this is like not a very good camera. It's like, hey, what camera are you using? Yours looks really good. And it's like, well, it's the same one. I've just twiddled my lens a bit to get it in focus. So I really wanted to just cover how to focus because it only has to be a little bit off um, and it all goes a bit soft and you just can't see as well. Uh, and the other reason about swapping lenses is about what is the difference between like a 2.8, a 2.3, a 2.1mm a lens. And I also wanted to cover if you're looking at a replacement lens to check out about what type of camera you've got. Now, the majority of people tend to use what's called an IR blocked camera. So I just want to mention what that is and also what to look for in terms of these actual filters that block the um, infrared light, uh, which is quite important when choosing a lens. Anyway, first off, let's talk focus. It's hard to see here, so let's cut to a close up. In order to adjust the focus, you're basically moving this ring. Of course, you should have something like this ring that will lock it in place. Uh, some micro quads just have like a bit of glue around here to keep it in place. Um, but basically loosen it up and you can just move this around to change focus. So what you need to do is have your quad powered up, have your goggles on and literally just be moving this around. If you try and focus it on a sort of slightly middle distance, something with a nice straight edge like a tree or something in the field, then you'll find that great place. Go slightly past it, come back and you'll, you'll find it there. Uh, it, the tricky thing is sometimes getting it right. Say our focus point is about here, we then have to hold that lens tight and be able to get the locking ring done up nice and tight so it won't move anymore, which is easy like this, slightly harder if it's in a quad. And I just wanted to show this as a reasonable example. This is a case of me running out of thread and needing to get the locking ring out. But I've seen people fly with this sort of image. You can see it's people might think it's a bad camera because it's like it's kind of you can see what's happening but it's just way out of focus and it only takes a, a small couple of turns of that lens in order to get this nice and sharp so don't put up with a picture like this so in this quad i've got a 2.8 mil lens which is not not bad i mean this is the i think this is the the, the narrowest camera i want to fly with these days um and 2.8 used to be the standard then it kind of went to 2.5 and then a lot of people have gone more wide angle banker gave me these little two lenses to try. They're both from Runcam. Uh, this is 2.3, this is 2.1mm lens. Now, in the field, what I noticed is that this thread is quite short. So I got it in focused, but I didn't have enough room to put the locking ring in. And this is kind of the situation when I, I'm sort of getting these Runcam lenses, because they're kind of generic. Everything is generally like M12 in diameter. And although it fitted in okay and it would focus, I didn't have anything in the field to hold it. At home, I would have just popped a blob of hot glue on there just to keep it in place if I didn't have a locking ring. So I went straight to the 2.1mm lens, which has a longer thread so I could lock it in easily. And so here's the difference between the 2.8 and the 2.1mm lens. Here we go. And of course, I can't fly both lenses at once, so I'm trying to fly just a lap of the field and hoping I'm doing it about the same speed. Now. You'll probably notice there's a little bit of distortion in the 2.1 and it seems like it zoomed out slightly, which is of course how it looks. So there's not an enormous amount of difference flying forwards. It's in the corners you see it. As we turn here, in the 2.8 it feels narrow and I can't see what's coming. In the 2.1 it's like I can see almost around the corner. I can see a lot more what's coming up in the peripheral. So for me, I really like that much wider angle lens. For some, it's going to be a little bit too wide, but this is why you've got things like the 2.5 and the 2.3mm lenses instead. So that wasn't the worst camera I had. The, the worst was this one. This is a 3.6mm lens, but this is where the important thing about looking at what type of camera you've got and what type of lenses you have. Now, what we'll notice about the two lenses that I got to test, uh, these are both run cam lenses, a 2.3 and a 2.1, is that they just look like this on the back. Nothing special about them. But if we take off this lens here, you'll see it's got this little piece of glass on it and it kind of gives off just a little bit of an, an orangey tint. 
well it does to me anyway looks more like a sort of greenish tint in this lens what is this this is an IR filter to block the infrared light now I generally do use IR blocking cameras now what does this mean it means they block the infrared light out you can get IR sensitive cameras and they generally act very good in low light or night flying situations um, here's um, some footage of me flying at dusk and it looks here like it's midday because we had a, a camera with a, a great big lens and it was IR sensitive but you will notice that the colors look a little bit off often in the case of IR sensitive cameras you'll find the colors looking a little bit washed out not quite realistic where the IR block is the normal sort of camera if you like it gives a more vibrant natural looking color although both the cameras I were using the one in here and the one in here are IR blocking cameras the place where the IR blocking filter was in a different place so sometimes the filter is on the lens sometimes it's on the sensor and I just happen to have two similar looking cameras here if we take this uh, orangey one out you can see there that we've got that filter sat on the back of the lens and if we take the sensor out you should see that sensor is clear there's nothing on there if we do the same with this camera we can see like the run cam lenses there's nothing on there but if we look at the sensor we can see a piece of glass on top of it with the filter you compare that to the other sensor you'll see quite a difference there now they're not always quite this obvious sometimes it's just a little tiny piece of film straight over the top of it this has got a, a glass and a piece of film but essentially if you open if you unscrew your lens and you've got a piece of filter over it like this one make sure you get your replacement lens like that or if you've got it like this get the same one so if you're wondering what the picture will look like if you put a lens on where the camera is expecting it to have a, an IR block filter it looks like this what you notice is this real purplish color it's purple because the blue and the red channels emit more infrared than the green channel and blue and red together make purple so if you ever see a picture that's got this purplish tint in any of your cameras you might be missing an IR blocking filter somewhere on the line either on the sensor or on the lens itself but in order to show you the difference between this quite really narrow 3.6 lens much more narrow than I normally fry with uh, the 2.3 and the 2.1 I'm going to color correct up a little bit to try and put the green back in just so you can see uh, what the angle looks like now we still had the same problem with the 2.3mm lens what I actually did is stick a bit of blue tack on just to try and hold the lens in couldn't get it quite tight enough so it gave a little bit of shake and that's the, the problem if you if you have nothing holding that lens in place you need to have something to keep it tight else that lens moving will create a jello effect but have a look at uh, what we've got now well hopefully you'll be able to ignore the slightly wacky colours as you, you can correct for one scene and it'll completely change in another but all I want to get over here is the 3.2mm is way narrow and you can really see it in the corners once again uh, the 2.1 I like because it, it just sort of works and you see a lot. It also makes everything a little bit smoother because it's not quite so zoomed in. And the 2.3 is there for people that think the 2.1 is a little bit wide. Although, as I said, it's got a little bit of jello there on the camera. And that's because of me trying to blue tack it in there. I felt it important to show these all on the same copter instead of mixing it up with the previous one I had, even though the, the colour was better. So you get the sort of overall picture of, of what's good and how the field of view angle of each of the lenses work. So I know there's an expectation if you buy a ready to fly or bind and fly quad, it's gonna be ready to go out of the box. But my experience of having a lot of these things is often it's very much not the case and needs a lot of work doing. So don't ever be afraid, even if you've got something which you think is gonna be set up perfectly, to give this a little twiddle, especially if it just looks a little bit soft, just a little bit off. Uh, move it around, see what you can get. You can always, you know, you're not going to hurt it. You can just tighten it back up again and, uh, and fly and it'll be fine. Of course, if you've bought something and you're thinking, you know, I'm not seeing enough of my peripheral vision, what can I do? Get yourself a wider angle lens. Just make sure if you unscrew your lens where you've got that IR block filter. It's going to be on the lens or it's going to be on the sensor. Links to these little run cam lenses is below, of course. Any comments or questions, let me know. Until then, I hope everybody will be lovely focused and replacing lenses if you need to. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.
Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.